with products that are similar to the products that they've seen or products that we believe are going to interest them. Now, that's a fairly typical recommender problem. Uh, one big issue for us is the scale of the operations because we have approximately 8 milliseconds to choose a set of products among 2.5 billion, pro billion products possible. So the sources of data that we use in order to compute that are first catalog data, very standard data that is given by retailers. So you get, for each item you get an image, a name, description, price, categories. You get user behavior data. So we have basically the, hist the web history of the users, all anonymized obviously, uh, on the merchant websites, so the page, that the page views, basket, sales events, all the listing pages, all that is sent to us in real time. And the ad display data, so basically we know when we display a product in an ad and when the ad has been clicked. Uh, the way we do recommendation is that we receive a request from a user with uh, the products that they've seen. We retrieve candidates from some pre-computed sources that, well, uh, I'll give more explanation later, but basically this is all computed offline. We score in the real time the candidates from the several sources, and we select the winners. There are a bunch of issues that uh, arise when you try to implement this at scale. First off, how do you retrieve user-specific products? Uh, ideally, for each user, every time you want to display an ad, you'd be able to look at the entire catalog and look at all the possible interactions between the catalog items and the items that the user has seen. And you would be able to rank that and display the top end items. Now, that's extremely hard to keep up to date, as you can imagine. You can't possibly pass millions of items in a few milliseconds. So we use scene products as a proxy. What we do is uh, for each product that the user may have seen, we compute offline uh, a bunch of interesting products. Uh, that is based on collaborative filtering, but not only. Uh, we are working to include more content-based data in that offline computation. But what's really cool is that uh, this list from viewed product to a list of interesting products, this is something you can compute entirely offline on, say, a Hadoop cluster with a few, th a few hundred machines, and it scales just fine. No, you also have to store for each user the list of items that they've seen, uh, but that's pretty much trivial to store and maintain. If you receive a new event, you just append it to the list of uh, user events, and that's it. So these two data stores allow you to uh, generate a list of candidates that you can then rank using a machine learning model. Now, the second issue is how do you actually score the product? So we need to fuse data from several sources. Uh, some of it is product specific, say the price or category of the item. User specific, say how long has it been since the user last went to the, part, to the merchant website. Uh, interactions between the user and the product. Has the user seen the product? Has the user seen similar products? Has he actually bought similar products in the past? And display specific uh, features. So, for instance, the website onto which we publish uh, the advertisement is uh, has a lot of weight in uh, the prediction. So, for instance, we do some dis some ads on Facebook, and we know that the content that works on Facebook is not quite the same as the one we show on, say, Google New or Yahoo News. Um, so the first solution we implemented a couple of years ago was just a regression model. Uh, so you just, based on all the products you've displayed in the past, you predict a probability that the product will be clicked and that there was a sale following uh, the click. That's very easy to train and to evaluate. You just have to pass a lot of lines. 
Uh, no, the second solution which we've started working on uh, a couple of months ago, and we are actually going to test it in the coming weeks, is a full ranking model. So we still have the same objective function. We still try to optimize post-click sales, but uh, you use only multi-product banners, and when there are several products in the banner, uh, you try to order the products so that the clicked product is uh, the one that you predicted was going to be click. So ideally it's the first one, but you have to account for potential bi uh, biases in the banner design, and some banners may lead to more naturally the user clicking, say, on the second item. And so that was one of the difficulties in implementing the ranking model. Uh, the third issue that came up was uh, how do you pick the right products once you've actually scored or ranked uh, the candidate items? So the first question was user product fatigue. If you keep showing the same product to the same user again and again and again, you actually see that performance decreases. Now, in an ideal world, we would be able to store all the times that we've displayed an item to someone and the number of times we've actually displayed it, use it as an input in the model. No, that's actually a lot of data to store, and we haven't solved that problem just yet. Uh, another linked prob problem uh, would be the independent product choice assumption. So we pick the top n items from the ranking. Uh, now, these items may be extremely similar and way too similar, actually. If a user has seen an iPhone, uh, we may recommend the new iPhone, and we may recommend it several times once thing on the two spots, and random helps you a lot with that. If you had to maintain a different data store, you would most likely not be able to do that this way. Uh, but we still have plans to improve this in the future. Uh, no, uh, how did we actually achieve the eight millisecond response time? Um, we built a prediction library that's completely in-house in C Sharp. Uh, it takes about 40 microseconds to uh, actually compute a score for an item. We predict everything in two steps. We do first a fast pass with a very limited amount of features that are inexpensive to compute, and we use that to trim about 80% of the candidates. And then the remaining 20%, you actually do a slow pass with all the features you can in order to get uh, the best ranking you can. And well, technical details, we do all the real-time code in C-sharp, we do a synchronous I.O. so that we can maximize server usage, we use HA proxy to scale the front end, memcached to store the data in memory. And that scales up quite nicely. So we currently have 1.7 billion users. We generate up to 200,000 recommendations per second. Uh, we've published a first public data set, so that's four gigabytes of display and click data that's available to anyone for academic usage. And most importantly, we're hiring, so come see me after the talk if anyone is interested. So do you have any questions? You mentioned uh, user product fatigue and like you can't actually store the number of times you've displayed a product to a user, so how do you actually solve that problem? So currently the way uh, we solve that problem is that we introduce a bunch of randomization in the content of the banners. We actually have a separate machine learning process to optimize the amount of randomization that goes into the banners. Um, uh, it's actually more of an, a legacy question uh, whether or not we should store uh, item counts. I think we currently could, uh, but it was not the case in the past.
Hi. Do you make use of any uh, demographic information about uh, about the user, like zip code and, and things like that? Do you have any of that? So we are not currently using any demographic information. Uh, first off, we use only anonymous information, and uh, we wouldn't want to take any risk with various things like climate prediction, personalized shopping assistance. Uh, we'll hear even about a system to recommend or learn the clothing style for people and even like user interfaces. And then finally, we'll have uh, a panel as well where we'll discuss controversial issues in personalization. All right, thank you. Thank you.